We're almost done with day one of the NCAA tournament, and my bracket's not in bad shape. Uh, I've only got one loss. Thanks, Kentucky. We'll see if I can do any better predicting the Guardians opening day roster on our final roster projection show of Lockdown Guardians. We'll also take some of your mailbag questions. And if time allows, I'm going to rank the Guardians prospects that I think will make a debut in 2024 by the impact they're going to have on this year's roster. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Lockdown Guardians. I'm your solo host today, Dustin Latta. Jeff has the night off to handle some family-related things. Nothing bad, just uh, got some other stuff to take care of. Uh, I want to make thank you for making Lockdown Guardians your first listen today and every day. We are free wherever you get podcasts. Uh, I know Google's going away, but they're, they're asking to convert it to YouTube. But we're on Spotify, uh, Stitcher. I think we're on iHeartRadio. We're on a bunch of places. And we're on YouTube. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can also listen to podcast ad-free, which we are also at over there as well. So thank you. Um, for those who maybe aren't familiar with me, if this is your first time listening, and again, we always do our introductions because we may have somebody new listening and they may want to figure out why on earth we are hosting this podcast, why I'm hosting this podcast. So I started covering the Cleveland Indians farm system back in 2007. Believe it or not, I was actually only in high school. Um, I've written for just about every Cleveland baseball blog out there you can think of. I have covered the Guardians farm system and the team uh, for the News Herald and Morning Journal over the last couple of years on a freelance basis. Um, I run my own newsletter. I used to be the managing editor of Guardians Baseball Insider slash Indians Baseball Insider. And I also cover other prospects at Prospects Live, where Jeff is also at too. So I've been all over the place covering prospects really in baseball uh, for quite a long time. Got a lot of stuff to get into today. You've got to make it really quick uh, to get through everything I want to get through today. But we'll start out with some injury updates in case you uh, haven't heard anything going down. It's been kind of quiet down from Arizona, really, as camp starts to wrap up and we're getting close to opening day, which is why we're doing a roster projection episode that we haven't done in a while. Uh, I know we just talked about roster decisions on Thursday, but let's actually talk about who's going to make the roster this time around. Um, so some camp updates. Sam Henches was scheduled to throw to 60 feet on Thursday. He has not pitched since, I believe, March 14th. Let me see if I have that correct. Uh, it's been quite a while. Yes, March 14th was the last time he pitched. So it's been a week. It's been over a week. Um, but he is scheduled to actually throw uh, on Thursday. We'll see how that goes. Gavin Williams, things are really trending in a good direction for him. He threw out to 75 feet. The club said he uh, had excellent tolerance throwing and still wasn't going to throw Friday. Um, still going to start the season on the IL, but things are in a good position for him. A couple other guys still battling that viral illness that will just not leave Goodyear. Hopefully when they leave Goodyear and they go to Arizona for those exhibition games at the Diamondbacks' actual Major League Stadium, this will all be behind them. Tyler Freeman is back participating in full-team workouts. I know some people said, why has he not been in the lineup recently? It's due to the viral illness. Curry and Lively both threw bullpens on Thursday. So those are the last guys still dealing with that. James Karinchak, we know, uh, or has still has shoulder fatigue. He is only throwing out the 60 feet and doing plyo work. So going to be a while for him. And Angel Martinez, this one is a newer update. Um, he fouled a ball off his right toe or right foot last week. He's it's still been kind of bruised up and he's not responding to it. So he's got a bone bruise in his right foot. He got a quarter zone shot uh, about a month, needed a quarter zone shot about a month, uh, almost a month ago at this point. So um, he's he hasn't played. I'm, I'm pretty sure, not sure what's going to happen to him. Obviously, he wasn't going to break camp with the major league roster, but um, those are the updates on those guys. All right, final opening day roster projection. Let's see if I can do a better job at this than I'm doing if I'm filling out brackets. Although, like I said, I only had one loss, doing okay, uh, except for Kentucky's dismal uh, appearance. So let's start the starting rotation. This is actually really easy. So Bieber, Bybee, Logan Allen, are you going to be your first three starters of the season? <clears throat> we know that much already. Four and five up in the air. It depends on whether or not they want to throw Tristan McKenzie um, in the fourth game of the year, if they want to bump him back to the fifth. Tom Hamilton said during the broadcast on Thursday 
against the Royals that he thought that Carlos Carrasco was going to make the team. He seemed pretty confident about that. And honestly, I, I kind of feel the same way. I kind of feel like they're going to find a way to put him on the roster. I know Jeff has not agreed with that. <clears throat> and I think, you know, we agree Ben Lively is going to make the team. Um, but I think that uh, Carrasco is going to wind up making this team with the injuries. I think that with the way the injuries are setting up right now, the way things have gone and the lack of depth they have, I think getting him onto the 40 man roster would create some depth for them. You know, it allows them to send Curry to AAA to stretch out, to go along with Cantillo. And that's all they've really got at the AAA level. Truthfully, if you look at starting pitchers, um, they don't really have a lot of guys going to Columbus in that role. Those are the only two guys on the 40 man roster that you can call up um, to start a game. If they, if, if Cantillo and, and Curry are in the rotation down there and you're going to need that. So I think, that makes a lot of sense for them to do it. And, you know, they'll have Ben Lively, who I think is going to make the roster. I know I keep joking about him being out of options. I really liked that signing before uh, when I thought he had an option. I don't as much anymore, but um, he could have been triple A depth too, but he's going to make the team because of his option situation. So I think this is the ideal order for the first time around. The thing is the guardians only really need the fifth starter the first time through they've got, you know, eight, seven in a row with Oakland and, Seattle, they go to Minnesota for their season opener, and then they have a day off on that Friday. So they can push someone out of the rotation um, that week, and then they have another off day the following Thursday. So they can also push somebody out of the rotation there. So they only need the fifth starter that first time through, honestly. So um, I think just adding Carrasco gives them a little bit of depth. And, you know, Gavin Williams will be back hopefully by that third series. I'm hoping, you know, it's only two starts for somebody else, just based on what we're seeing. So uh, hopefully it won't be a long injury there. So I think that building depth there makes some sense, adding Carrasco to the roster and putting other guys in at AAA. All right, in the bullpen, a little bit trickier. You have Class A, Barlow, Nick Sandlin are all pretty much locks. Eli Morgan is a lock. I think Hunter Gaddis is a lock to make the bullpen at this point as well. Everyone else seems to think so. I do too. I think Tim Heron's going to make the bullpen. I think this is going to be a big year for Tim Heron, as I've said before. And just based on the fact that Sam Henches has not pitched in over a week and he's just now throwing again, I, there's only what four spring training games left. There are one, two, yeah, there's four spring training games left as I'm recording this. I don't think that's enough time for Henches. He hasn't pitched back to back yet. As far as I can see, um, I can confirm that real quick. He has not pitched in back to back games yet. So that's going to be on his checklist to complete just a little bit of a buildup might even ask him to go two innings at some point. So I think he is probably slated to start the year on the injured list, which, you know, Heron, I think was going to make the bullpen no matter what, but now he's a lock even more so. And then Ben Lively will start the year as a long reliever. And I think Tyler Beatty will as well. I think putting Beatty on the roster gives them a little bit of um, extra depth early on, especially because, you know, Tristan McKenzie is still working through some things, it seems like. And, you know, Carlos Carrasco will see. I think it'll give him some cover on the major league roster in terms of being stretched out. The other tricky thing is this Ben Lively has not pitched since March 8th. He's been out with an illness. So it also wouldn't shock me to see him start the year on the injured list as well. Um, he needs to get into a game relatively soon because uh, of his situation too. So honestly, Ben Lively might start the year on the injured list. And we could be talking about Kate Smith. So maybe I need to amend my own projection right here just because of that situation, this illness has really knocked a lot of guys out, but he threw a bullpen, like I said, on Thursday. So he is not currently slated to pitch Friday, obviously. So um, <clears throat> that leaves the 24th, 25th and 26th for him to get in the game, but it's been a little bit since he pitched. They may want to um, find a way to, to get him to build up a little bit first, but I still think there's a chance he makes the roster anyway for the work he's done at this point. And again, you could start him on the injured list if you really wanted to, but I think it probably makes sense. He'll be okay. I think by the time that, that game rolls around, they could get him in a B game on the 27th, but you have to get up to Oakland, so I don't know. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky with him and Henches. I didn't think we'd be getting this late in the camp and having these sorts of issues. All right, so that puts us at uh, an eight-man bullpen and a five-man rotation, obviously, so that is 13 players on the roster. So. Obviously, you can only have 13 pitchers, and you can you have to have 13 hitters to balance that out. You can't have 14 pitchers. That just continues to be a rule um, in Major League 
baseball. All right. We got to do the infield and the outfield. I'll talk about the bench. I'm going to talk about how I would do the roster. This is me guessing how I think the Guardians are going to do the roster. I might see it a little bit differently, but the number to know uh, before we move on to the next segment is five. So keep five in mind, and I'll tell you why that is a significant number in just a second. Let's be honest. I think we can all probably agree that uh, groceries and necessities are kind of high these days we could all use a little extra money back and uh save some money on things or put money towards something else that's going to way it's going to help us that is where ibotta comes in ibotta is a free app that gives you most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies and toys so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing there's a lot of other apps out there that are going to give you points that don't amount to much you just gotta add your offers to the app upload your receipt and you get real cash that you can cash into your bank account, PayPal, or a gift card. You know, put it towards a game you want to go to. Um, could cover maybe some bills. Maybe you want to use that money on something else. Maybe you want to put it towards a vacation you've really been wanting to go to or out to a nice dinner to celebrate an anniversary. Ibotta can help you do all that by downloading the app uh, because right now Ibotta is listing you, our listener, $5 for just trying Ibotta and using our code LOCKDOWNMLB when you register. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store, and download the free iBot app to start earning cash back and use our code LOCKEDONMLB, that's I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play Store or App Store, and use code LOCKEDONMLB. Put some of that money you're getting back uh, towards, instead of putting money on your bracket in the traditional way, you can do it on FanDuel. So if you're one of the people who Kentucky ruined your bracket, maybe Duquesne did, I took Duquesne only because of some loyalty to Keith Dambrod at coaching at my alma mater, Akron. Uh, so I took that one, but maybe those two games really messed up your brackets. Uh, FanDuel lets you say goodbye to busted brackets because you can bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, if you are a new customer, this is a great time of year to get in on this, really. $200 in bonus bets right now if your first $5 bet wins. So, you know, there are still one versus six teams on Friday, if you're listening to this on Friday, there are still one versus 16 games. Um, I know we've had some 16 over ones recently, but go ahead. Put the $5 on if you're a new customer on that one beating a 16. And then if that bet wins, you get 200 bucks from FanDuel in your account. You can use it on point spreads, money lines. You can pick who is going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, so why is the number five significant? Well, if you're not familiar with the rules, maybe you've forgotten, need a refresher. The maximum times you can send a player, a minor leaguer who has options left, up and down from AAA to the majors is five times without exposing him to waivers. Now, I know in the past you might say, well, I thought options were years. Yes, each player, when he's added to the 40-man roster, has three option years, but in within those individual years, now in the new CBA, you can only send players down five times. So last year, Tim Heron was that guy who went up and down multiple times. Uh, once you get to a sixth time, if you try to option a player down to the minors a sixth time, they go through waivers and then someone can claim them. So you can only do it five times. And I'm saying that now because someone has to do it every year. Like teams took advantage of that rule to get a, you know, Tampa Bay was one of the worst defenders of this, where they would bring a pitcher up and down. I think it was actually a former uh, Cleveland prospect, Lewis Head, who went through this before the CBA changed um, up and down every day. And they do it because of openers. And, and sometimes you just need, if, if, the, if someone gets hurt, or the bullpen gets torched, you need to bring up a pitcher who didn't pitch yesterday just so you have a, a arm that uh, can give you some length just in case. So, you can only do it five times now. So someone's got to ride that bus a little bit. And that's why I talked about how important it was to build depth. That's why I think putting a guy like BD and Carrasco on the roster to start can help them because then it pushes guys like Curry and Cantillo. And as much as I would like to have Cade Smith start the opening day roster, I think maybe it makes sense to go to AAA for him um, just so they can have somebody call up because right now they're not projected to have anybody in that, in that minor league bullpen. Um, on opening day to call up, you know, there's nobody else but Kate Smith. So you need at least one guy and then Curry can be, be that other role. 
if Ben Lively was in that role, he could have done that. But again, he doesn't have options. All right, infield, this is pretty easy. Um, Naylor, Jimenez, Jose. The only only thing I'm really guessing on here is Rokio. I think Rokio is going to end up with the shortstop job. But there's a caveat to that I'll get to at the bench. And then I think pretty clear at this point, Davis and De Los Santos is going to make the open day roster. He's going to bounce between first base, DH, and probably some outfield, depending on who they're facing and when they need to get in the bats and how they can best play him without overexposing him, but also bench him without uh, being a detriment. The thing with De Los Santos is, this is so hard, is he's got to play because you cannot let him sit for a, a mass amount of time. Like with the pitcher, it's okay because they can throw bullpens. They can do other things. I know it's not game experience, but you know there's things you can work on with them. With hitters, you need to see live pitching every day. You really do. And he doesn't have the development yet. So if he sits for too long, you know, he's not really developing and that's going to hurt him in the long run. Even if you want to move him to triple A lat next year, that's, you know, costing him time. And if he, if he finishes the year with you, but you also can't overexpose him too. So it's going to be tricky. I don't know how they're going to balance that line, but it's pretty clear at this point to me that he is going to make the opening day roster in the outfield. Again, this is pretty easy. We know Quan, we know Straw because of the money. We know Loriano A, because of money, B, because I think he just makes sense on this roster, and um, I think it's a good pickup. And then Esteban Florio, I think we all kind of feel like he's going to make this roster only because they gave up Cody Morris, and I know some people are saying, well, maybe they were just going to move on from Cody Morris, and it doesn't really matter. Maybe, but I think that they're really going to give this a shot and try to at least give it a month. I don't know what it's going to be, but they're going to try, try to do it and see what they can get out of that because they didn't want to trade Cody Morris for just nothing, at least in my opinion. You know, they made that deal because they really could have used Cody Morris this year with everything going on, obviously. I think that's, that's I don't know what he's doing in Yankees camp. I really haven't checked. So, who knows? I think they're going to try and make that work as long as they can. Again, this is about building depth for the season as well. Um, I don't like the idea of not having Will Brennan on the opening day roster. And, you know, we're talking about opening day and we were saying the other day about it doesn't really matter who's on the opening day roster because just because you're standing there on, on the third baseline during player introductions in Oakland or in Cleveland in April or March doesn't mean you're going to end the year with the team. Doesn't mean you're going to take the majority of the year at bats at that position or on the 40 on the 26 man roster. It just means you're there when you're there. And that's true. So even me saying Florio on the, even doing this exercise of who's going to make the opening day roster, it is an artificial deadline, but there's some, some fun to it. We're doing this, but also, it's about creating depth for the whole season. I just don't like Brennan not being there at this point. I think Brennan is still a good enough prospect. He's still in good standing. I know he didn't have a great year last year, and I was expecting more from him. I still think I still believe in Will Brennan. I really do. I think he can play, and I think he fits in a good platoon with Ramon Laureano. I don't think you need Florio in center. I know people are disenchanted with Straw. I'm disenchanted with Straw, truthfully, if I'm if I'm talking about it, honestly, because Laureano can do center. Um, Freeman can do center. I think Brennan can play center. Are they as elite defenders as Miles Straw? No, they're not, but that's fine. You know, I think they're good enough. They're good enough. I don't think you need elite defense in, in center. And if you want to put him in late in the game and take advantage of his defense late in the game, that's fine. And I'm not saying, you know, because he's on the roster, because of what you're paying him and because of how baseball works, he definitely needs some occasional starts. Is, is it enough to to give him the Tyler Freeman role last year where Freeman only played on Sundays. I don't know, but there are ways for him to be useful as a pinch runner provided he is willing to run this year. Last year was a, a strange year where he didn't run a whole lot. So I think Florio is going to be here. I just, I think Brennan is a little more deserving if I'm being honest. Here's the kicker here. I have Austin Hedges. We know is going to be on the bench. Um, and Tyler Freeman, I think has made this team. Now Freeman hasn't played in a while either. Freeman has, has, been out of the lineup due to the injury bug, so I, I assume he's going to be okay. Um, I think he makes this roster, though, pretty easily. I think he can bounce back and forth between the outfield and infield. And then I also have Gabriel Arias making the roster. I think they're going to take both north, honestly. I think this is going to continue into the season where they are both in and out of the lineup a little bit. And that's at the sacrifice of David Fry. It's at the sacrifice of Will Brennan. And then, you know, Florio I have in there, plus De Los Santos all over. So, it's going to be a four man bench and I, that's, that's pretty, it's going to be short. Like you have an eight, you have a 13 man pitching staff and nine in the, in the, the lineup. So it's going to be a four man bench and you already have one spot committed to hedges. So it's a three man bench. 
And as much as I think it makes sense to have David Fry, they talked a lot about him um, focusing on catching, doing other things. I have a feeling he might be in AAA to start the year, even though I'm not really sure I like that. I just think that they're not going to send, they're not going to want to send Rokio or Arias to AAA. I don't think they want to do that. And I think you're going to let both these guys get reps in, in the regular season this year because honestly, Arias can play the outfield if you need him to. He can play first base, he can play around. Rokio can also play the other spots in the infield if you need him to. I think they'll take advantage of that versatility a little bit and let one of these guys get hot and maybe they'll option somebody down later um, and see what happens because spring training just isn't the time to do this. So I think this thing will continue into the regular season. All right. I'm going to talk about my ideal roster. We got to get to your mailbag questions. Uh, we'll see if we have time for prospects, but before we get there, um, 662. So 0.662. That is the number to know for the next segment. I'll talk about why that's important in just a moment. Have you started watching March Madness yet? Are you watching college baseball? I know you're going to want to watch Cleveland and Oakland next week when opening day finally gets here. You know, it's at 10 p.m. East Coast time. Fire TV is your destination for sports, live sports, in-depth analysis, highlights. I've got Fire 6 all over my house. You can plug those into your TVs or you can use your Fire TV. Uh, they have millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free live TV. They recently also created Fire TV channels to deliver constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports fans all for free. That includes us here at Locked On. So maybe on Friday when you're before first tip of, of those games or late at night or Saturday or during the week when you're getting ready for the regular season on Thursday, you can turn on all of our Locked On channels, including us on your Fire TV and most of the pro leagues and college conferences as well. Let you dive into all the analysis highlights, keep up to date on the latest the world of sports, plus news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. You can definitely trust us on this to learn more. Visit Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All one word. All right, 662.662. Is, is more important. Why is that the number to know? Well, that is what the Guardians OPS was against left-handers last season, left-handed pitching. Not great. It wasn't much better against right-handers, if we're being honest. So maybe the handedness just doesn't end up mattering all that much. Um, but 662 was their OPS against um, left-handed pitching last year. And that's got to improve. And I'm going to improve that with how I would open my year with the roster. So my opening day roster, <clears throat> I have all the same guys in the rotation. I'm putting Tyler B in the rotation. Here's why. I'm putting Carlos Carrasco in the bullpen. I think that makes a little more sense for where he's at in his career right now. I think Tyler Bede can serve as the fifth starter until Gavin Williams comes back and then Carrasco in the bullpen. Um, and I have, I have everybody else in the bullpen the same way. And then I have um, – my if I, did, if I was doing the opening day roster, I'd have Kyle Manzardo start the year. Do I think it's likely Kyle Manzardo wins rookie of the year? No but I think he is one of your better best 26 hitters and he is ready right now. I know some people said, Oh, platoon split concerns, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's that. But honestly hitting left hitters in triple a, isn't going to help him do it. It's going to, it's going to happen in the majors. Same with Josh Naylor. So Manzardo to me, if I was running the roster, I would do him on the open day roster to figure that out later. Um, and obviously I'd have Will Brent on the open day roster. I would not have Esteban Florial on the roster. I just don't see a future for him here. I see a future for Will Brennan. I see, you know, Loriano being here this year, and obviously Quan and Straw. My extras, I have a five-man bench, honestly. Um, <clears throat> I, I didn't put uh, another guy in the bullpen there. I was one short. So I would go with the five-man bench because you don't need that extra starter early on. So you have Hedges. I think Fry. Fry, to me, is a key in this lineup. Arias and Freeman are both right-handers, so I think can hit lefties. Or, take that back. Arias cannot hit lefties. We, we don't know that. But you have Freeman and you have Fry who can help out against lefties. Um, and you have Loriano as well. So I think having those guys in the lineup every day or, or every day against lefties can help them improve on last year. Let me know what you think of my roster. Tell me how you'd fill out yours. Uh, let's see how, if I can get it right, if I can do better than a March Madness bracket. All right, let's get to some questions before we get out of here. Uh, Dennis Quigney. I spelled your name Dennis, but it's really Dennis. Um, last year, we traded Will Benson on March 25th, right before the season. Do you foresee... Another player being shipped off to clear some of the middle infield mess prior to the start of the season. He was guessing Gabby Arias to the Rockies for comp A pick. I don't think 
Arius is enough to land that comp A pick. I just don't. But again, these picks, these comp A picks, these comp round picks, the ones that can be traded, and it is super tricky to figure out their value. So I just don't see it there. Um, would not shock me, though, if we saw a trade later to clear up a 40-man spot. I think Jose Tena is a guy who could be traded at the end here just because they're really hurting for infield spots and just doesn't make sense to me at this point. And Angel Martinez, they really like him right now. Plus, you have Brito. And I think John Kenzie Noel, um, he is on his last option year. He just hasn't shown anything. And I know people are going to complain and say, well, what if he goes and hits somewhere else? It is what it is. And you want to know what? Hopefully, in a perfect world, Chase Lauder does force his way to the Major League roster this year. So, you you know, you're going to put Stefan on the 6th IL, probably Karen Shack, and then that's two spots right there. I think Tana or, or Noel could be a late spring trade just because they're out of spots here. You know, you've got Rodriguez in AAA. Valera's going to come back um, at, maybe at some point. You want DeLauder to get there. You just don't have room for those guys. I think Tana above Noel just because of all the infielders. They might hang on to Noel a little bit longer because of the power factor. They're willing to to give more time for that. To me, Tana doesn't have power. I know he's a great defender, but you know, you've got other great defenders in this roster too. And he's got one option left too. Tana, Arias, Rocchio, uh, Freeman is on the major league roster, but Noel and Valera all have one option left. I think that's going to be the factor here. So I do think there's a good chance somebody gets traded late in spring to clear up a roster spot. It's a good question. William Stearns, what are we seeing so far from the new skipper that suggests he's going to manage differently than Tito? I don't know. Nobody knows. I like his philosophy on he's you know open to more swing and miss for power um i don't know if that's necessarily a vote thing versus a tito thing we don't know though we just don't know bullpens we don't know how he's going to platoon guys we don't know what numbers he's going to figure out how he knows the league who he's going to listen to besides you know um carl willis who he trusts i don't know we don't know anything yet so there's nothing you can really say um cheeks malone one of our everydayers one of my favorite favorite names Uh, a lot of prospect questions here i'm just going to take one because we're running out of time, and I want to get to other people's questions. Let's just um, talk about Cole Mathis. And let's do a draft one. Cole Mathis, tough start to the year. So, change your opinion? No. And here's why: um, there are some rumors that Cole Mathis is not 100 percent right now in terms of health. Don't know if that's true or not, but that's that's what's going around. If that's true, that explains a lot of what's going on. It explains why he's not pitching. Explains why he's playing only first base and DHing. That explains why his numbers are down. My, my opinion has not changed. I think Cole Mathis still has the talent of a comp round player who can play all around. I think he's got a great arm. It's just he might have an injury right now. We don't know. Um, but if he's if his value is falling in the draft, this is where Cleveland should scoop him up. If he gets that third, second, second or third round, and you can offer him under slot because he's had a down year to an injury, and you know he's hurt and you know he can rebound from that, snap him up with uh, a lower pick and less money and you know, call it, a, call it a great deal. This is a good one. LeBron Ramirez uh, wants to know, playoffs game one, what is the starting lineup? This assumes everything really went well. <laughs> uh, that is optimistic. I like the optimism. All right, well, you've got Quan and left. I still want to hit Jose second. I just do. I like Jose hitting second. Um, Naylor third. I think, uh, you know, or I'd put Jimenez third. Naylor, Naylor playing first. I would have... Mansardo at DH if they're facing a righty. Um, Rokio at short. Um, I would probably say Ramon Laureano or Will Brennan in center. And then maybe the other guy in right. Or if we're really being optimistic, chase the lauder in right field, right? That's how we're being optimistic. So uh, that's where I would go with that. <laughs> that would be quite interesting. And then obviously Bo Naylor, catcher. Uh, longtime listener of this podcast, mother podcast, Guardians of the Future, Jared James Lang. What is your feel for this team? That's just a very basic question. I When we do predictions next week, we're not going to do, I don't think we're going to do traditional predictions. I think we're going to do a range of outcomes and we're going to try to rank the range of outcomes because my range right now for the Guardians is 75 to 85 wins, depending on how things go. Um, the pitching staff, if it's healthy, certainly can carry this team. You know, I think I think Bieber will have a healthy year. I think he looks good in spring training. I think all signs point to him feeling strong. We'll see. I'm a little bit leery on McKenzie right now just because of his injury history is a little more extensive and um, he's only had the one healthy year. So I'm a little worried about McKenzie. And then, you know, you'd have to put 
somebody else in that fifth spot, maybe a Cantillo, maybe Carrasco or Bead sticks around this year. We'll see. But the rotation can carry this team a lot. Um, you know, I, I want to believe that Bo Naylor is going to hit the ground running this year, but I do think there could be some growing pains for him too, even as good as he was in the second half of last year. Um, you know, Andre Jimenez has to be better than he was a year ago. Great, a lot of defensive value. The counting stats look good, but he's got to be a little more consistent. He was streaky last year. They've got to settle on an outfield rotation that works for them, even if it means platooning, because I think platooning can work. You know, Quan was a little up and down last year as well. They need, they probably need MVP level Jose Ramirez to make a run. Let's be honest. If they don't, if they get la- like Jose Ramirez was fine in 2023, he was good. Don't get me wrong but they probably need like an MVP level Ramirez if they're going to make any sort of run, not just divisionally, but in the playoffs period. Um, you know, I think the pitching and some health this year, they didn't work consistent bullpen. So my range is 75 to 85 wins. And I think 85 wins could easily win this division. I really do. It's, it's not a pretty division. Um, one last question from Pat. Um, who is your one, one at this point? So let's talk about that. Who is your one, one at this point? I'm still going with Travis Bazana. Um, there, you can take risks in the first round and Cleveland sure has taken in a lot of them. Let's, let's go back and think like Ethan Hankins in the first round was a risk. Brady Aiken to some extent, Chase DeLauder was a risk. Daniel Spino was a risk. They, they have taken big swings in the first round. A lot of that is because of their picking lower in the first round. When you're picking one, one, you do want to go with an elite level of talent without a doubt, but you have to also calculate how much risk you can take because you, Cleveland, you know, I know a lot of people say this is a terrible franchise and blah, blah, blah. They've never picked first overall. They've never, they've, yeah, last time they picked this high was the Francisco Lindor year. Was it, was it um, the Clint Frazier pick? I can't remember. One of those two years. They haven't picked this high in a while. They never picked number one overall. I think they need to get this right. So you don't want to be like safe with that first overall pick, you know, because you want to make sure you're getting high end talent. Otherwise it's pointless to pick one, one. Right. But you know, there's also other rounds they have to be good at too and use their money wisely there to get the best out of this, this draft pool. They're going to have money wise because they are going to benefit from that as well. So it's a really balancing act. You have to go and take a big time talent because you don't get a chance to draft this high in the draft very often. And, you want to add an impact talent no matter what. But, like, if I was going all risk, yeah, I would take Jack Caglione because him and Crowder Griffin, to me, have the highest upside in this draft of anybody. Like, those two guys could be superstars. But there's so much risk involved with both of them that I think it's too much for 1-1 one, one this year. If I was picking 10th and those guys were there, yeah, I would swing on those guys for sure. But at 1-1, one, one, there's too much risk to me. Travis Bazana to me right now, represents the biggest combination, the best combination of upside because we know the heart, the hustle, the work ethic, the character all matters. You want to make sure you're getting somebody with number one pick who takes it seriously and you know he's going to put the work in to be great. We know that about Bazana. He is crushing inferior talent. Um, He's got the great cape data. He has the data on his swings to back it up. Defensive spectrum might be a problem, but I've said this before. I think a 1-1, you want to draft for the bat. You want to draft for the bat, you figure out the defense next because the bat is what's going to impact your team the most at, at this position in the draft. So to me, Travis Bazana represents the best combination of major league talent that has the safest floor and the best upside. And I think he's an impact talent, and I think he does it quickly. So it's going to be hard. I, I was obviously a big Nick Kurtz guy early in the year, but I think right now with Nick Kurtz's injury and, and the performance, I can't take him 1-1. It's Travis Bazana, and I'm going to have a hard time coming off of Travis Bazana as the 1-1 one, one guy right now. All right, that's all we got for this week on a Friday edition of Lockdown Guardians. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for supporting. Leave us some reviews. We haven't had one in a while. We could really, we really appreciate a review. Um, share with a friend if you can. we got the season coming up. We want to grow our subscriber base. Uh, if you enjoy it, give it, you know, tell a friend, and you can uh, talk about it with another friend. Position reviews. Next week, we'll start with position reviews. We'll talk about first base. We'll do our season predictions, all that good stuff coming up next week. Thank you for listening and all that good stuff. Everybody have a good weekend. Enjoy the brackets. Enjoy some of the games on TV for baseball and go, go guardians, go.